OK, so we have three drawers, each contain four coins. Draw A contains four gold coins. Draw B contains three gold coins and one silver coin. Draw C contains two gold coins and two silver coins. David selects one of these drawers at random and then selects two coins at random from that drawer without replacement. So probability, determine the probability that he selects two gold coins. Now, this may look like a tree diagram question. And in fact, you can draw a tree diagram for it, but this might not be the best situation to draw a tree diagram. Firstly, we'd be picking a draw, so we'd have three branches. And that's nothing but wrong with that. But then we have two choices for each draw. And then, because we're picking two coins, there's going to be three layers of branches. So it means by the end, actually, you're going to have quite a lot of branches. It's going to take up quite a bit of space working out. So this is better off just considered, actually, by considering what could actually happen. So part A, what we're saying is probability to gold. Thinking about how this can happen, breaking down a problem. The way this can happen is that I could pick draw A and pick two gold. This is going to be with the union of draw B and picking two gold. And this is going to be the union of it being with draw C and picking two gold. So what we're going to do is we're just going to work out individually the probability of each one of these outcomes. So initially, probability of picking draw A and two golds. Well, the first thing we should note is that they are independent events. The, the draw that you pick is not affected by the gold coin or how you pick the gold coins. Okay, the gold coins change, so there is kind of conditional probability in there. But actually, the coins are unaffected by which draw they're actually in. So the probability of picking draw A, it will be the probability of picking draw A times the probability of picking two gold. So the probability of picking draw A is a third. And then probability of picking a gold from draw A is one. And then probability of picking a second gold from draw A is one because all of them are gold. So I mean, a little bit pointless there, but it's just giving you the idea of what we're doing because we're doing the probability of picking a draw times the probability of picking a gold coin first times the probability of picking a gold coin second. Let's do this for draw B now. So draw B and two gold. So again, this is going to be a similar sort of idea. I'm not going to write this all out now. Probability of picking draw B is a third. Probability of picking a gold coin, first of all. Well, draw B contains three gold coins and one silver coin, so it will be three out of four. And then because that's not replaced, there will be two gold coins left out of three gold coins, uh, coins in the draw. So what we're going to end up with, we can do a little bit of cancelling here so that it saves us some time and what we get is one sixth. And then finally we can find out the probability of picking draw C and two golds. So again the probability of picking draw C is a third. This time probability of picking a gold coin is two out of four, so a half. Now there are three coin there are three coins left. So we're multiplying. So there are three coins left, and only one of them is a gold coin. So when we multiply this together, we get one over eighteen. Okay, so what happens at this point? Well, probability then of picking two gold coins. These events are mutually exclusive because you can't pick draw A and then two gold coins at the same time as picking draw B and two gold coins. So what that means is I can add all of these probabilities together. So we're going to get a third plus one sixth plus one eighteenth. And when you work this through, you are going to get five over 9. Okay, so let's check to see how we are going to get our marks here. We get a mark 
method mark and an accuracy mark for all of this block, however you've laid it out, as long as you've worked out the individual probabilities for the three draws and picking the two gold coins by multiplying the three probabilities, these bits here, you're going to get a method mark. Okay, then you will, uh, sorry, not just a method mark, but an accuracy mark as well. And then you get an accuracy mark for five notes, only if you have got the right answer of five knights. Okay, so let's have a look at part B. Part B says, given that he selects two gold coins, determine that draw A was selected. So what we're looking to do is we want to find the probability draw A is selected given two gold coins. This is going to be equal to the probability of draw A selected and two gold coins over the probability of two gold coins. So we've actually worked this all out in question one because the probability of A and two gold coins is just a third. And then the probability of two gold coins is five knives. And when we work this through, we get an answer of three fifths. So what do we get here in terms of marks? Well, first of all, we get a statement mark if we have one third as a denominator, sorry, as a numerator. We get one statement mark, B1, for getting the denominator to be five notes, and then we get one statement mark, B1, for getting the correct answer only, that is three fifths. Okay, so this is very, very similar to a tree diagram question because we're calculating the probability of a certain outcome being combined, like this total probability idea, and then using that to find a conditional probability, working backwards to find the conditional probability of what draw you picked. However, the size of the tree diagram might make it an unmanageable task, so breaking it down and thinking about the combination of these independent events and mutually exclusive events happening to make, meet your requirement is a much more efficient way of doing this question. I hope that all made sense and that you understood what we was doing.